Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. Hey guys, today is Tuesday, July 25th and the energies in the day adds up and reduce to the number three vibration. If today is your birthday, happy birthday. So when it comes to the spirit animal, we are working with the dragonfly energy and with the dragonfly energy reflecting uh, the spirit for the day the dragonfly is bringing me to the importance of being flexible and also too with the dragonfly energy it brings me to that thought where it's like if you get if you stay ready you never have to get ready so with the dragonfly energy it's bringing me to say being ready for anything it's like anything can happen to have a vibe is bringing me to like the number five which is like a wild card energy that deals with sudden and unexpected changes but i feel like the number three also plays that role but the number five is a part of today because it is the 25th but the day being the 25th, 2 plus 5 is 7. So even though the number 2 is sensitive, emotional, and caring, the number 5 is that wild card energy, you know, dealing with sudden and unexpected changes. Even though that is a part of it, like 2 plus 5 again is 7. So there's an introspective feel to the day. There's a need to go within. There's a need to be still. But with the day adding up and reducing to number five, like being still is the last thing a lot of us might want to do today. So with the energies adding up to number three vibration, this is where we find ourselves being curious about everything and absolutely nothing. Very similar to Gemini energy. The number three, we find ourselves turning over every stone for the sake of it. We find ourselves starting new things and never completing it because it was never about the process or even starting the thing on a whole. It was just the experience. We just wanted to have the experience. So with the number three energy, like Gemini energy, it makes me think of a buffet or someone going to a restaurant and instead of eating just a, a large meal, they order a bunch of small appetizers off the menu and just have the table covered with a bunch of things just for the sake of trying something new because focusing on one thing too long will feel, you know, boring. It's like eating the same thing over and over and over again forever. It's like wanting new experience. So when it comes to the energies in today, there's this feeling, you know, of wanting to experience something new, wanting to have something new, wanting to do something different. Like I remember having a conversation with a friend yesterday that has been talking about buying a new dog or buying a new gun or buying a new this or buying a new that. And I was telling my friend, it's like, maybe all the things that you keep thinking you want to spend money on, like aren't things that you actually want. And in all reality, instead, like, you know, it is calling you to something deeper. There's something more that, you know, wants your attention and all these different things that you're thinking about doing are just different ways to kind of like, uh, scratch that itch. I would say, um, when it comes to say today, the moon is at 29 degrees at, in Libra at 12 noon. Um, depending on when you see this video, the moon might already be in Scorpio and when the moon enters into Scorpio, like you guys have heard me speak on, say, uh, you know, when the moon goes into Scorpio, when the moon goes into Scorpio, that is no joke for me. And it's not just say Scorpio energy. It's other places where the moon goes, even say sometimes in Pisces. It, it, it to me, it's like a, a domino effect of things uh, coming together that really like make the phase of where the moon is heavier than normal in the sense that say I'm up to date when it comes to my spiritual updates up to date, meaning that 
I'm eating well, I'm sleeping well, I'm journaling, I'm content, I'm good, life is great. When that's the case and the moon enters into Scorpio, I don't feel anything, I don't notice. But say for a second something is off within my life and I feel incomplete or something is happening around that time. With the moon in Scorpio and me dealing with other things, sometimes the things that I'm dealing with feel so much heavier than normal because when the moon goes into Scorpio, it brings me to feeling like imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome in the sense that no matter how well I'm doing or how well other people might tell me that I'm doing, all of these feelings of being insignificant and not good enough start to take me over or if you've ever had those feelings, they'll come back. So when I look at, say, where the moon is and the energies in the day, like some of us could find ourselves avoiding whatever it is that we're feeling. OK, this is what I said to my friend. I said to my friend, maybe you're lonely and because you feel lonely, you keep feeling like you want you need to make a big purchase of something because you want to feel something. So when I look at, say, the moon, you know, where the moon is and being at such an intense degree, it's like. On the inside, we're going through changes because the moon is changing signs. So our feelings are changing, but it hasn't landed yet where we could put our finger on it. So before we put our finger on it, instead, we'll find ourselves focusing on things outside of us to where we're distracted by things around us or we want to have some kind of an experience where with the day adding up and reducing to the number three vibration, this is where we just want to experience something for the sake of experiencing. I think of people who are strongly associated with the number three, how food is a way of escape because through every bite or, or trying new things, there's different stimulations, there's different feelings. So it's like food could be a portal, you know, for the number three. Mars is the ruler of the day and Mars is in Virgo. And with Mars going into Virgo, some of us could find ourselves way more organized than normal. We're getting stuff done. We're productive. I find for me, um, you know, Mars entering into Virgo, like yesterday I created these videos and today I'm recreating them because yesterday I, I created them totally different. And I shared that in one of the past uh, videos, but I created them a little bit different. And today I'm like, nope. I'm going to go back and do them over. And even though there was a part of me that's like, no, but I want to eat. I want to do this. I want to do that. There was that motivation to just get it done. So the benefit of Mars uh, being in Virgo and Mars being the ruler of the day, there's that energy, that extra push there to help you to be more efficient and to do what needs to be done. But also too, with Mars and Virgo, we could find ourselves getting so ups getting uh, obsessing over the details so much to the point that we procrastinate in place so much to the point that we paralyze in place and absolutely nothing gets done. So we go from having a bunch of ideas and things that needs to get done to absolutely nothing getting done because, you know, it's so overwhelming thinking about all the different things that we have to deal with. So when it comes to Mars and Virgo, Mars is opposed by Saturn and Pisces. And with that opposition, you know, we always want to come to a common ground and a common ground between Pi between Pisces and and Virgo is, you know, visualization equally match with the energy that we're putting out. And Mars energy deals with action. Saturn energy deals with structure. So to me, it's uh, taking action in a structured and organized way is a nice way to make the most of that opposition. Mars is also positively aspecting Jupiter and Taurus. So with Mars positively aspecting Jupiter and Taurus, we have the motivation to take action and do things in a way that is traditional, do things in a way that's familiar, in a way that feels safe. My attention goes to Pluto and retrograde in Capricorn. And with Pluto retrograde in Capricorn, I think about when we were going through like the Capricorn, the end of the Capricorn Saturn, the end of the Capricorn Pluto transit. And how, like for me, that's when I really started looking into Pluto and Capricorn and how collectively it was making us honest about our jobs, our careers, and things like that. 
So with Pluto retrograding back into Capricorn and in retrograde, a lot of us are reflecting on our careers, our legacies, and our place in the world. And with Mars in Virgo and Jupiter in, uh, in Taurus and those positively aspecting each other, I think, a lot, I think about a lot of us um, reflecting on our career and legacies and trying to find um, routes or trying to figure out ways how to make it feel safe and we'll never be able to make anything feel safe because there's no such thing as like life is always changing and life is always changing like look at 2020 and how that caught us off guard things in life is always changing so for that regardless of how we try to perfect things or look for the stable and the safe route with that aspect it's like we're only just going towards whatever um, whatever we've seen a lot a lot of meaning say I think of the person who wants to pursue um, creating music and this person could be really good at creating music and the sky's the limit when it comes to them creating music but maybe they're coming from a background of maybe uh, an accounting background and the accounting background feels safe and traditional because it's something they've done for a while and they know people who who do it and they're part of a community of people who who's done it by default because in the years of doing it and meeting others who do it that's the world that they became a part of so it's like when a person thinks about like them trying to create their music you know anxiety might come over them as there's a lot of unknown factors when it comes to the money they'll make and different things like that so i think about the mars positively aspecting jupiter in uh in taurus i think of the person questioning you know going back towards their accounting past especially with pluto and retrograde in capricorn a person considering going back to that past going back to it because it's safe because it's familiar so going back to it because it's safe because it's familiar even though with pluto and capricorn and retrograde we're reflecting on our legacy and how we would want to be remembered and with pluto energy pluto is very transformative so there needs to be some level of transformation within us to stand in our truth and to you know create the kind of life or experience we want to have for ourselves so when i think of all the aspects being when i think of the aspects being made and the energies in the day i get the feeling of some of us uh there's something brewing within us and something wants our attention but we could find ourselves uh focusing on everything else because whatever is happening within us it's like for whatever reason we just don't want to go there for whatever reason we just don't want to bring our attention to that so it's like everything else around us might be you know pulling on our strings as with the dragonfly energy we're curious about this that and the next so there's like a lot of sudden changes where it's like one minute you're going over here next minute you're going over there and it's like i don't know what i want to do type of vibe so i think about the person who's confused about the path that they want to take career wise and really it's not that they're confused is that the path that they feel like they should take it's because it feels safe it's predictable but the path that they really want to take is terrifying so they don't even bother to even entertain that and the tarot we're working with today is the king of cups in the upright position and the king of cups in the upright position brings me to say emotional stability being emotionally stable being emotionally grounded because when i look at the king the king is in a position where there is nothing but chaos around it as far as the waves and the ocean so i think about us dealing with all these different feelings but we're able to sit still within whatever it is that we're feeling so when i think of the king of cups and the dragonfly energy it brings me to the importance of sitting in whatever it is that you're feeling and trying to understand what it is that you're feeling so it can guide you to what's next for you is what i'm getting with these energies when i was doing the reading for today i found myself feeling like i need to hurry up I found myself here, there, and everywhere, which reminds me of the dragonfly energy because whenever dragonflies show up in your life, it, it, it talks about sudden changes, like how things might be, you know, how you might be experiencing some kind of a sudden change because the dragonfly is able to switch uh, directions when flying at top speed. But the dragonfly does deal with the mind, the mind. 
So it brings me to say how, you know, we could find our mind changing. And of course, if our mind is changing, our emotions is constantly changing. So that explains the whole King of Cups energy where the king is sitting on his throne and it's chaos happening when it comes to the emotions. But the king is still sturdy within all of that. So even though, you know, we could find our thoughts being all over the place and from our thoughts being all over the place, our emotions will match. But the king of cups in the upright position, you got this. It's not nothing that you can't handle. And my biggest thing with this message is to, you know, when, it, when, when you find yourself wanting to, you know, try everything or do everything or get into your Gemini mode and curious about everything and absolutely nothing, ask yourself, what is the deeper thing that I'm running away from within me? Why I feel so distracted by so much around me? I feel like if you ask yourself that question, like sit still, ask yourself that question with your journal, with your journal out, you'll be so surprised how the answer will just come to you or in the process of journaling, it just comes. My attention is also going uh, to the hands of the King of Cups for whatever reason. And with my attention going to the hands, it's bringing me to say uh, the importance of um, what you have in your hand. What are you holding on to? What are you holding on to? Because a lot of the times it's the things that we're holding on to that makes it hard for new change and opportunities to come into our world. And some of us feel like it's possible to hold on to certain things and welcome in other things at the same time when, you know, we just have to let go and embrace the newness of certain things. Some of us may feel like it's possible to hold on to the past as we try to welcome the future when we have to completely let go of certain things in order to welcome new things into our world. So when it comes to say, you know, this energy, whatever is happening today, you can handle it. Yes, the mind might be going from one extreme to the next as we're trying to avoid or ignore whatever it is that we're feeling inside. But again, like how the king is sitting there, you know, all sturdy and stuff, whatever is happening isn't anything that you can't handle. And with the day adding up and reducing to the number three vibration, the number three brings in new beginnings, just like the number one but it's new beginnings that we've been working on. So some of you might hear some news back today about something. If you've been waiting for news back, you might hear news. You, you might, today might be the day that you hear the news back. But when it comes to say the energies in today, you know, if you find yourself going from one extreme to the next, stop and ask yourself, what is it that's happening within me that I'm not willing to accept? or that I'm not willing to surrender to because I'm not willing to hear or not ready to hear whatever that thing is that's happening within me that's trying to get my attention. You guys, such a pleasure sharing this message with you as usual. If you'd like to book a natal chart or tarot card reading with me, the link for that is in the description box below. Also, if you'd like to check out my exclusive content only on Patreon, that link is also in the description box below. Please let me know you are here with me by dropping me a yellow heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.